Hey everyone, it's your Jason again. Welcome to part two of the villainous, Disney's villainous, uh, <clears throat> game. We're going through the rest of the cards. The first, the first video, it's a Captain Hook card. If you, uh, assuming you watched your first video, if not, go back. I do a quick brief explanation of the game. Again, it's not a tutorial. Um, it's just kind of letting you know some of the mechanics and what the gameplay is. So if I'm revealing the cards, you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Um. Went through all the figures, the little parts, the boards that you can play as, and I went through the Jafar deck. So if you're looking for that, it's in the first video. So now we're going to go through the rest. Um, I love these backs. So it's Captain Hook. He's got the hook. He's got a you know, ship wheel. He's got some daggers, anchors, you know, a bunch of piratey stuff. Um, would have been maybe cool if they had a clock on there. But hey, I still love it. So we're going to go through Captain Hook. And Captain Hook's goal is to defeat Peter Pan. Um, I believe at Jelly Roger, so he has to move him there. So he's got Cunning, this is his condition, so it lets him play it during another player's turn. He's got some Pirate Brutes, this art on these cards is just fantastic. So he's got a Cannon. This one here allows him to gain a Vanquish or defeat a hero for free, or attack a hero card. Um, on this location, so it adds an extra spot where you can do that. So instead of just where it was normally on the board, you can do it on that board as well. So basically, you're trying to defeat Peter Pan in a specific spot. You could put that card on whatever spot you want instead of having to try and move and go a different one. Uh, give them a scare. Um, he has a neat uh, hook. Has a cool thing where he just actually play around and look in his bait deck and move cards around. Um, play some of them because he wants to try and get Peter Pan out so he can try to tempt fate to get Peter Pan out quicker. Uh, aye aye, sir. Um, he has another card here. So he has other cards that he can place this down and gain extra power quicker so he can play cards quicker. And then not every villain in the game has has extra cards like this. And that's what makes it neat because it makes each character pretty neat. Of course he has obsession. During their turn, if another player defeats a hero with a strength of four or more, you may play Obsession. Reveal the top card from your fate deck until you reveal a hero. Either play or discard that hero. So again, this is so he can quickly get out uh, Peter Pan um, whenever he wants to go fight him. So he doesn't have to wait for your opponent to try and play him. Uh, Swashbuckler. Um, Jafar kind of has a similar thing where if he plays with the magic lamp, Genie automatically comes out. Versus otherwise, like, if you had to rely on your opponents, like the other villains to sit there, they could be like, hey, I know you need Peter Pan out. I'm not going to play with your villain deck at all. You can't win. You know, so that way it gives you an op the option to pull your own stuff out, which is pretty cool. Um, this allows him to do an ingenious device. It allows him to actually use the fake deck for another player. Just attach a bomb to it. We got good old Smee. Gets extra if he's at the Jolly Roger. The Neverland map, map. If you watch your first video, I mentioned this. It allows you to unlock the Hangman Tree, so you can actually use that location. He's got a neat one here, Boarding Party, so you can attack heroes in the location they're at or a separate one. You got Cutlass. I think that might be all for that deck. Yep, so now we're going to go the fate deck for Captain Hook. All the heroes. We start off with Taunt. Uh, this is kind of neat because it forces you to defeat a hero at Taunt versus somebody else. Otherwise, if there's three, four heroes in the same spot, you can attack them in any order. Uh, we get Michael. We got some Pixie Dust. And again, I just love the thing of the game where all these things are pulled right from the movies. Like, you're watching these, you're like, oh yeah, I remember when he got hit there. Or you're like, oh yeah, it's that character. Um, I think the Robin Hood one was the one that really got me the most because I haven't watched it in so long. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about all these characters. Uh, the Lost Boys. Got Wendy, who gives... All other heroes in Captain Hook's Realm extra strength, so that's pretty powerful. Good old TikTok. Mm, we can't forget about Tank. 
And finally, we have Peter Pan. Um, it says, when Peter Pan is revealed, you must play him immediately. Because normally when you draw from the fate deck, or an opponent does, or whoever, but if, you know, like, if I'm playing a different character and I draw from Hook's fake deck, I have to pick up two cards, I get to choose one. Uh, Peter Pan, he's there, he automatically goes out. So again, it's just a way for them to force Peter Pan to get out quicker than he's supposed to. Not supposed to, I guess, because that implies that he shouldn't be coming out, but... Um, next, we're going to go over Maleficent and look at this amazing artwork here. It's got a crown, a scepter, the thorns, the dragon form, her green flame, and her raven. Like, everything on here just screams every piece of Maleficent. Um, I'm going to start with Tyranny. This is one of her conditions. I like the conditions because they kind of feel like, to simulate like a seven deadly sin type of thing. Like, what aspect of personality do these villains do? And then they gave two for each character that I thought was cool. Here she got some savage goons, just big powerful guys. Here's got a crackling goon who's not as powerful, but he gains one strength for every hero he's fighting. So then she has curses, that's Maleficent's thing. The Forest of Thorns. Heroes must have a strength of four or more to be played at this location. Discard this curse when a hero is played. So basically her goal is to play one of these curses, there's a couple different kinds, at each location on her board. Um, but there's always an effect that they play a, a different thing they can discard. It. But you can also play multiple curses on multiple locations. So you could play two of these thorns, but I'm pretty sure they both be discarded at the same time. But you could also play a thorn with a green fire. Heroes cannot be played at this location. Uh, if Maleficent is moved here, move, discard this location. So if you played the thorns with the green fire, they couldn't play a hero to stop to discard the thorns ever. So basically that's secure, but you cannot move Maleficent there, otherwise you lose it. So that means it basically blocks off a couple of your actions. Um, there she has Malice. We have her magic staff. We have a Sinister Goon, who gets extra strength wherever there are curses. Uh, another curse, the Dreamless Sweep. Heroes get minus two, but an ally can't move there. Or can't be played there. You can move an ally, you just can't play it. So, um, like, what does that exactly mean for the game? Is It basically means that if you need to defeat, let's say you have to defeat Prince Philip. Um, he's out of spot. You could play this down, he'd get minus two strength. But you can't then on your turn also play an ally there. To like, okay, now he's weak enough, I'll play some of their get him. You can move an ally from a different location, but then you have to hope that you have an ally that's powerful enough that's like in an adjacent spot. They're two spots away, you know, he might not get to him in time, or you have to spend extra turns. Um, so yeah, it's the whole entire point of this game, like for every character, is you gotta kind of figure out what's the best way for you to play your deck. No one's going to necessarily play everything the same way twice. You might find a combo that works for you, but like this idea, the green flames in the forest. But that also depends on which of the four board locations you put that them cards, because you might block off, oh, I blocked off the thing for me to allow to play Fates at all, so therefore now I can't play anything on other players unless I end up wrecking this combo I have. So it's, uh... Yeah, you gotta kind of pick your own. Everyone picks their own way. And this is the fourth curve. Oh, this is an item. A spinning wheel. She, of course, has her dragon form. So that's her defeat a hero. I think that's all we got for... Yeah, for her. Now we're gonna look at her fate deck. Even these women look great on the regular, on the white colors, too. So we have a sword of truth. Once Upon a Dream, which lets you uh, discard curses. King Hubert, which brings all the allies to one spot. It could be used to remove that one curse as well. Another Sword of Truth. Uh, we have the Princess Aurora. 
we have some just generic guards. Again, you can check on this one, like, okay, like, guards, they weren't named. Well, they weren't named in the movie. Um, we have Aura. We have Meriwether. And then, of course, we have Fauna. So we get the three, three of them. We're going to get Almighty Prince Philip, which is the best one for this deck. Um. He's played, you may discard all allies from his location. Um, and then finally, we have King Stephen. Um, so that's kind of neat. When he's played, you can move Maleficent to any location. So you can move him to that green flame where Maleficent can't move, otherwise, it's discarded, and force her to discard it. So again, it's, it's, it's a strategy, not just amongst, you know, um, the player playing the villain, but also the other players manipul manipulating that fate deck. Alright, now we're going to get King John. Got some axes, diamonds, rings, a crown, a treasure chest, some gold coins, his throne, a bag of money, basically everything that says Greedy Prince John. I'm going to start off big with the Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, before Prince John moves, you may move the Sheriff of Nottingham to any location and gain one power if their hero is at this new location. Uh, so it's neat, so you can move him anywhere and automatically get one power. Prince John's win condition, get 20 power. Um, you're going to have to spend cards to do it, but that's worth it. He's got a golden arrow. He's got his greed. Uh, is a condition during their turn if another player has six or more power you may gain three power so it's like that's pretty cool just automatically get three power uh we got the rhino guards wolf archers intimidation uh it says perform a vanquish action but do not discard allies used to defeat heroes so what that is is vanquish is what you need to you have to be on a specific symbol that lets you defeat heroes. Basically, you're on that spot, you play an action somewhere on your board. If there's a hero and your allies are on the same spot, as long as their strengths are equal, you can so if I have a, a five cost hero, you know, let's say Prince Philip, and then I have five costs worth of allies on my side that are, you know, I can discard my five costs to, to basically destroy his. This lets you do it without, you still have to have that five power, but you don't have to sacrifice your characters. Uh, in prison, move the guy to the jail. Um, Prince John is kind of a neat thing, because he actually wants heroes in his realm somewhere. He'd prefer to have them all in the jail, so they're not affecting him, but he can gain power for each one. Um. And get, discard them. I mean, it does allow you to get 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 rid of them with their way, but he also has gain two power each time a hero is played to this location. So if you play them down, you can gain more power when heroes get played. Uh, he's got Nutsy. It's plus one to allies. <clears throat> uh, King Richard's crown makes your cards cheaper. Some bow and arrows. Trying to find a different one. Ooh, he has cowardness. Um, which is kind of funny because all the rest are usually like powerful conditions. His is not just not powerful, but cowardice isn't like tyranny or malice. Uh, but it's kind of a weakness for him. Um, if any other player has three or more allies in their realm, you may play cowardice, place an ally from your hand for free. So it's like a really cheap way to get like Nottingham out, which costs four. And then you don't have to sacrifice your four power. That you're trying to build up. Um, and then we have Sir Hiss. We have Trigger. And that is it for the villain deck. Get a good look at this one here. So we have Maid Marion. He's got Clever Disguise. When it's played, attack to a hero. That hero cannot be defeated at any time. He may pay two to discard this card. 
So basically, it's punishing Prince John, because again, he's trying to gain power tokens, and you're making him spend them. Uh, steal from the rich, you can take up the four power from Prince John, put it on any hero, when that hero is defeated, he gets the money back. So again, it's just a way to keep, keep it away. We got Robin Hood. We got Toby. We got a Little John. Also takes tokens. Skippy. I think this is one of the fate decks there's a lot more heroes and it has other cards. Uh, Allen Adele. Lady Cluck. And finally, Friar Tuck. That was Prince John. Alright, two more villains to go. We have the Queen of Hearts, which is a red one. She's got her teapots up there, some hearts, uh, dripping red rose. I just painted the card, uh, the card symbols, you know, big giant hearts at the bottom, her uh, croquet mallets. You know, again, I love the backs of these cards. I won't say it enough. They like really just scream. That's the character. She's got judgment. So then she's got her special cards, the card guard, the clubs, and you can pay one power to convert this to a wicket. So like during her game, you turn them to a wicket, you turn them sideways to represent they're a wicket. Um, they no longer can attack or defeat anybody, but you can also pay it to turn it back. You're like, oh no, their power is getting overwhelming. Let me do that. Um, another thing you can do is add spears. Um, you can even add spears to when they are wickets because end of the game, to win, you have to take the shot and it depends on how much power you have. Uh, she gets the king. Bunch more spears. We've got card guard diamond. I mean, all the guards are the exact same stats, they're just different characters. Uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh, we got Off With Your Head, much to defeat heroes. So this is her main card, take the shot. It says, if there's a wicket on each location, reveal the top five cards of your deck. If the total cost is less than the total strength of all your wickets, you may take the shot and win the game. So each wicket, they do have different strengths. So like clubs are three, diamonds I think were two, um, or these are spades. So you got basically, you can play spears to try and make them more powerful. Or you can try and play more of the same kind. Uh, very unmerry birthday. And we got hearts, which are also three. By the order of the queen, you can automatically convert two, so that could be like a quick wing right there. Fury, during your turn, if another player defeats a hero with strength or four or more, you may play Fury, shrink up to two heroes. So, I'll look at this one quick. Make you smaller. Either shrink a hero or enlarge a hero. Or turn a large hero back to normal. So what shrink does. This is one of the only times I'm going to pull up the board. Just to show you. Because it's a, it's a neat effect. I you know had to look it up. So if I have a hero card. For the sake of being. I just grab Sebastian. So you know what I mean? If I play a hero. It covers up these. I can't use them effect. If you shrink a character. You turn them this way, so they're smaller, so they only cover up the one. So that's kind of a neat thing. If you enlarge a hero, so if an ally enlarges a hero, it turns them like this. So it covers up the two in this location, plus one in that. So it's kind of a neat effect. It works really well with uh, the idea of like, oh, because it's synonymous with, you know, that movie. Um, you know, shrinking and enlarging, so it's cool that they're able to add that in there as an effect. Um, and then you, as the Queen of Hearts, can manipulate that to some extent. She got a stopwatch, gain one power for each wicket in your realm. That way, like, you have enough power to play your cards. Alright, so she has a lot of the same cards. She doesn't have a huge variety like some of the other ones do. But that's because she has five cards she needs to have out to win. Where some of them, you know, 
say John doesn't need any cards necessarily. Uh, some of them only need three cards, or some of them are in the ally deck. Uh, here we got some heroes. Uh, I'm late. I'm late. With that, we got the White Rabbit, which makes uh, guards activating power cost more. Moving ally to any location, so you can disrupt her wickets. Mag Hatter. Here's one that makes you larger. Caterpillar. Chess our cat, which is actually kind of neat. When he's played, you may convert to two wickets to guards. Uh, when he's defeated, the queen may may convert two guards up to wickets. So, like, you could use that later on and actually could be pretty powerful. Um, we got the March Hare. We got Al Alice herself, which prevents the queen from moving things. Down the rabbit hole. A Dormouse, who can't be shrunk. And finally, the Go-Go. Alright, so that was the Queen of Hearts. One more deck to go through. This is kind of a long video. That's why I split it into two, though. We have Ursula, our final one, the purple. He got her eels, her cauldron, uh... A shell, the trident, another shell, a crown. Probably don't recognize what half of those are, that's fine. She's got trickery. And then she's got arrogance, of course. During their turn, if another player defeats a hero with strength four or more, you may play arrogance, draw three cards, and he may discard three. Um, so she's got a, her special thing is she's got binding contracts. When binding contract is played, attack it to a hero who is not Ursula, who is not at Ursula's lair. Uh, that hero is defeated when they're moved to Ursula's lair. So basically, you play these contracts on one of the characters, let's say Ariel, and then if she gets moved to Ursula's lair with this card, she's automatically defeated. Um, Ursula is unique in the fact she's the only character that doesn't have the ability to just straight up vanquish and fight. Um, the other characters. So she has to rely on these binding contracts. She get Jetsam. She's got a whirlpool, but yeah, like lets you move a move a hero on any location. So you can immediately play that on whoever has a binding contract and move them wherever you need them. Get your cards back. She can use another option. Um, she's also got Change Form, which allows her to move the locked token from Ursula's Lair to the Palace. So again, what's unique about her board is that there will always be, most of the boards that have a locked spot, like Neverland, um, example, like uh, Hangman's Island was locked, or Cave of Wonders. They will become unlocked if you play a card, they stay unlocked. Hers will always have one, so she's either herself or she's in her human form. Depends on which area is unlocked. Uh, you get the Trident, which automatically sounds Triton. So there's a binding contract for Eric's ship. There's one for each of the four locations. Uh, Divination. What's also pretty neat about this game, here's the uh, shore, is that all these different cards, six different characters, not a single card name has been repeated. Cauldron. Like, it would have been easy to have, like, every single character have, like, ooh, everyone has, or, like, two or three of the characters have, like, a scrying card, or uh, something like it allows you to defeat a character, or draw a card. I uh, got the poor unfortunate souls. But it's neat that they gave different names to all the characters. Uh, we have a crown. I mean, some of these might come back around at some point, because, like, there you have a crown. Um... How many different games can you have different crowns, right? So there's her fate deck. i go through that. <clears throat> Return to form. This allows you to change Ursula back and forth. Um, I think. Nope. Oh, well, I was going to move heroes. I'm sorry. Here's Ariel. She has a bunch of text. 
Um, she has her awesome items, her Snarful Blart, the Snarful Blat, her Dingle Hopper. Uh, of course, you get Eric. You get King Triton. Um, you get Scuttle. Grimsby. Flounder. Max. And of course, Sebastian. So that was Disney's Villainous. Um, I'll be doing another video when the expansion comes out uh, sometime in March, early March. Um, and that will have a couple more characters. That'll add uh, Hades from Hercules. It will add um, Dr. Thaliser from Princess and the Frog. It will also add uh, the Evil Queen from Snow White. And what's cool is because the way this game is designed and the way it works is that you can play those three as a three-player game or a two-player game by themselves, or you can mix a maximum here because since each deck operates independent, each character operates independent of themselves, there's no reason why you can't continue to mix and match. So, I really hope they keep making more villains. Obviously, there's only so many different villains and different types of decks you can make. Um, but it should be interesting. I know, like, Hades has... Uh, his goal is to unlock, unleash the Titans. So, there's various Titan cards that are in his deck instead of allies or Titan City plays. Um, Dr. Phallisers, and I might be pronouncing that wrong. His is to take over New Orleans. He has special... Um, he has a special board, board thing that does something extra. He, I forgot exactly what it does. Can I go over in that video when I've actually seen the cards? Um, but yeah, he unlocks special like potions or experiments to do different things. And the queen is... I don't remember what the queen's trying to do. Um, probably trying to kill Snow White. Um, <laughs> that's what we have for this game, Disney's Villainous. Catch you guys later. Bye.